Hi, this is Gary with Alden American. Today we're gonna to do an installation on a 67 GTO convertible. What makes this kit a little bit unique is that we're doing our black anodized shocks. Black anodized shocks are available as a custom order. In addition to the installation of the coilover kit, we're also gonna do the POL control arms. These control arms are a direct fit bolt-on arm, but what makes them really unique is that they're set up as a coilover arm. It has this lower mount, so the coilover bolts directly in place. Now that I've showed you all the products we're gonna install, follow along and see how we do it. We're gonna get started by taking the front end apart. We're gonna do our Performance Online upper and lower coilover A-arms and the Alden American double adjustable coilover shocks. So in taking the front end apart, I'm gonna actually take the brakes and the spindle off, which will make it a lot easier to uh, see how everything uh, goes together and comes apart. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the tie rod loose. We've now disassembled everything. We're ready to start assembling. So now we're gonna put the lower coilover arm in. Now that we've torqued our bolts down to 75 foot-pounds, we wanna make sure that the arm swings nice and smoothly without any binding. On this 67 GTO, we found that the upper control arm is gonna rub here a little bit as it articulates up and down. So what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of trim right here to make it fit. When we assemble the shocks here at Alden, we do put anti-seize on the spring seat, but I always suggest putting a little bit more of the copper-based anti-seize on the top side of the spring seat, so as you rotate it in, adjusting the spring, it will get into the anti-seize. So we highly recommend using the thrust bearings, which is the ALD26. It's optional on all of our coilover kits. And so what we wanna do is because it's a thrust bearing, uh, we wanna put some, like a wheel bearing grease on it. And so what I do is I just put a little bit of grease on it and kind of fill between the rollers. And then we put our seat on and then we do the other side. So now that we've greased them, we put our spring seats in. We wanna take and kind of wipe the outside of the thrust bearings, the grease off. Now the thrust bearings, because they are a bearing material, they're not plated, so they will rust. So a little bit of grease on them does definitely help. And then what we do is we drop them on top of our spring seat. And what happens is by doing that, as you adjust your spring up and down, it takes a lot of the friction out, making it much easier to set your ride height. We're getting ready to install our shock now. So we have our greased thrust bearing, we have our anti-seize applied to the threads. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the adjustment knob off and this would be on our double adjustables. So you unscrew the knob. There are a couple of set screws, but do not adjust or do anything with the set screws because it's not necessary. Then we're gonna take the two nuts off and the washers, and then we're ready to set the spring in place, which would go like this. And now we're ready to put this up inside the frame. So when I tighten my upper shock mount bushings down, what I do is I tighten the nut down until the bushing starts to bulge, and then I take my lock nut and give it a little bit of a, a lock so it doesn't back off, 
And then on the double adjustables, I'm gonna take my rebound knob and I'm gonna screw it back on. And what I do is I tighten it down until it goes full stop. So it is now stopped. And so what I do is I back it off 10 clicks and that puts it in the center of the rebound adjustment range. And that's what I use as my starting setting. And we're gonna go out and drive the car and see how the car feels and make adjustments from there. On my compression knob as a starting point, I'm gonna set it at number two. So I'm gonna go one, two. So the next thing we're gonna do is put our spindle in place. We've installed our sway bar end link. Because this is an adjustable length sway bar, what we wanna do is when you get to the alignment shop, make sure both sides of the sway bar are equal after your ride height is set, so that way you don't put any odd preload on the sway bar. Now that we've shown you how easy it is to install the POL, control arms that are coilover ready, the black Alden American double adjustable shocks. Uh, our GTO is almost finished. I still have a little bit more maintenance to do that is not relevant to the coilover installation. We're gonna do brakes and we're gonna do some other maintenance to the car. So we're ready to start on our rear. So one of the things that we found on this car is that the way the tailpipe was made is it's gonna interfere with the coilover shock. Occasionally we'll find that, and so far of all the coilover kits I've done, I've only had two cars that I've had to remove the tailpipe to make a new one for. So the next thing we have to do is on the upper mounts at the frame, the bolt holes have to be drilled out to 3 8 of an inch. The original hole is designed for a loose 5 16 bolt, but we replaced the hardware with 3 8 So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install our upper brackets. So on the upper brackets, we want to set them up so the bolts are going up with the nuts on the top. If we do it the other way, the bolts and the, will hang down a little too much and we can't get the uh, shock bolt in and out. I've already installed the POL shock mount brace. Now we're going to tighten the upper shock brackets. So now we're ready to install our rear shock. So this is a double adjustable shock. It has a compression adjustment knob on the bottom, a rebound adjustment knob on the top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this at number two. So right now it's at number one. I'm gonna go to number two on the compression. And for the rebound starting point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go full counterclockwise. I'm gonna go one, two, three clicks and use that as my baseline adjustment to drive the car and make adjustments from there. One additional thing to note is this uses a bearing on the upper side and we use this misalignment spacer that slips in and this makes the bearing so that it's an inch and a half wide just like the bracket. This here is our typical 64 to 72 A body bracket. Now this car has an aftermarket style rear end that's custom fabricated. And on this particular rear end, we were looking at the bracket and we kind of said, hey, this looks a whole lot like the G body bracket. So we can use our G body bracket. And so it's kind of one of those things, if you know that you've got an aftermarket axle and it has this style bracket, we can use our G body lower bracket. Now that I put everything together kind of loosely with the impact gun, I am now gonna torque everything. So on all of our half inch hardware that mounts the shocks, uh, we're gonna torque it to 75 foot pounds. Now that we've completed our installation, we're ready to put the wheels and tires on, set our final ride heights. And then once we've done that, done a little test drive, we're gonna take it and have it aligned. For more information about Alden products, check us out at aldenamerican.com.